Hi, welcome to Tudor Cooking with Claire. Now today I'm going to do a Tudor or Stuart recipe for syllabub. Syllabub being um, a drink or a dessert um, made out of cream, uh, double cream, um, flavoured with white wine or cider. Um, now today's recipe is from a book called The Closet of Sir Kenelm Digby, Night Opened. And I'm actually using the 1910 edition of it. Um, Sir Kenelm Digby um, lived from 1603 to 1665, so he's from the Stuart period. And interestingly, his father, Sir Everard Digby, was executed as one of the gunpowder plotters. So that's an interesting bit of trivia there. Um, syllabubs, you'll find them in um, Tudor documents. Um, it's, although this recipe comes from a, a Stuart recipe book, um, I've got other recipes for syllabub that are in my uh, Tudor uh, recipe books as well. So it's a very popular dessert at the time. Now, Sir Kenelm Digby uh, talks about how this recipe is from My Lady Middlesex. He says, My Lady Middlesex makes syllabubs for little glasses with spouts thus. Take three pints of sweet cream, one of quick white wine or Rhenish, that's the white wine from the Rhine, and a good wine glassful, better the quarter of a pint of sack, sack being sherry. Mingle with them about three quarters of a pound of fine sugar in powder. Beat all these together with a whisk till all appeareth converted into froth. Then pour into your little syllabub glasses and let them stand all night. The next day the curd will be thick and firm above and the drink clear under it. I conceive it may do well to put into each glass when you pour the liquor into it a sprig of rosemary, a little bruised, or a little lemon peel, or some such thing to quicken the taste, or use amber sugar, or spirit of cinnamon, or of lignum cassii, or nutmegs, or mace, or cloves, a very little. So that's the original recipe. Now I don't really want to make three pints worth, three pints of sweet cream as the basic ingredients, so I'm thirding it because I don't want to make that much. So I'm going to use about a pint, five to six hundred millilitres of double cream. So I'm going to pour that into my bowl. I'm going to use around about 200 millilitres of white wine. Any white wine, favourite one, whatever you've got, it doesn't have to be from the Rhine unless of course you want to be really historically accurate. Then I'm going to use about 50 millilitres of sherry and again whatever sherry you've got to hand. Then 100 grams of castor sugar. And then I've chosen to flavour mine with nutmeg because I really love nutmeg and nutmeg you'll find in lots of Tudor recipes, it was a very very popular flavour along with cinnamon as well, you could put cinnamon if you want as well but I've just grated some nutmeg so I've probably got about a teaspoonful there so I'm adding that for some flavour and then I've zested a lemon so I really love the flavour of lemon as well. So I'm putting that in there. And then Sir Kenelm says about beating it with a whisk until it's frothy. So I'm going to do that now. And this will take a while. Right, I've beaten it until it's really frothy and everything's combined. You can see the sort of the bubbles on top. And now I'm simply going to ladle it into the glasses that I want to use. You can use any kind of glass that you want. You could use wine glasses or perhaps champagne glasses. I've got absinthe glasses here because I love them because they're decorative. So I'm just going to ladle it into the glass. And then obviously 
obviously you'll want to wipe it round so that it looks nice. And then, so Kenon talks about leaving it overnight. Well, I'm just going to chill it um, for the rest of the day. I'm making it in the morning to serve in the evening. So I'm just going to put it into the fridge to kind of set. And so Kenon talks about it sort of curdling into sort of two layers. So don't worry if that happens. So I'm going to put that in the fridge now and I'll see you in a bit. bit of a variation um, on the syllabub recipe in Lady Eleanor Fetterplace's receipt book. Um, Lady Eleanor um, lived in the Elizabethan period. Um, she calls it a cream but it's also um, the editor has put that it's a syllabub. She says take a pint of thick cream and a quarter of a pint of white wine and some rose water and sugar and some cinnamon beaten and the whites of three eggs. So that's a bit different, putting egg whites in it. Put all these in a pottle pot, which was a sort of a pot or tankard, and shake it, still keeping the pot closed. So you need to put it in like a container with a lid and shake it. As the froth riseth, take it up, and so dish it and serve it. So she's just shaking it till it's frothy and then serving it straight away. Now I made it from Sir Kennel Digby's uh, book and he said to chill it sort of overnight. Well I've just chilled this for about two to three hours and as you can see it's certainly more of a dessert than a drink and mine hasn't curdled but it does say in his recipe that you might get some curdling. I'm not sure whether there's a bit, a bit watery at the bottom. So you get the cream kind of sitting at the top and this sort of the wine and the, well the alcohol, the wine and the sherry at the bottom. Now syllabub in its primitive form, Hilary Sperling in, in Lady Eleanor's book points out that the syllabub in the primitive form was taken straight, you took the cream straight from the cow and you were actually squirting the, the milk or the cream into um, cider or wine uh, to make a kind of alcoholic drink or dessert. So that's where it comes from. Now I'm going to try this. So it's made quite a thick kind of moussey uh, consistency. I'll go down to the bottom in a minute and have a look, see what it's like at the bottom. Mmm, that's really, really nice. It's a sweet cream. Yeah, and I'm getting some of the lemon coming through now. So it's a, I would call it a lemon mousse with a bit of an alcoholic kind of uh, tang. Yes, it does seem to be more liquidy at the bottom. A really, really refreshing dessert. That would be perfect after a kind of heavy meal to really refresh the palate. I really, really like it and I will definitely be doing it again. It's a nice, simple dessert recipe. Bye-bye.